Ravens and Phoenix. And David, you're familiar with these two teams, so I'd love to hear some more. Two Ontario-based teams. They've met each other many times through our provincials and other tournaments. They're quite familiar with one another. On the near end, you'll be looking at Phoenix. With the black and red, and on the far end, is that lightning mode here for the Raven? It looks like it. We are probably a minute away, if not seconds away from getting going. Referees ready to get us started, and the opening rush has begun. First elimination of the tournament. Now six on five, Burton with the extra ball will be on Raven. Play call coming out of the middle. It's those uh, first throws of the day, just a little bit outside. We're all warming ourselves up. Burton now on Phoenix. Play call by coach Mike McMullen. And hops. Ball retrievers getting it, three with the ball. Four at the line now. Both shots firing, missing Pollard. Boy, you can hear the, the crowds are, like just with how many games are going on right now, it's just so loud. Seven courts of play for this tournament. And then meanwhile, as we're just getting going, perhaps we can tell the listeners uh, what are some of the key details of this tournament. We're set up with uh, two 11-minute halves for a round robin. When we reach no blocking, the teams obviously uh, no longer playing with the blocking rule. Um, we also have 30 second timeouts for each team, one per game. And we're watching the, the women's division right now and, and of these teams, there's two pools, 12 will advance to playoffs, whereas in the men's, we'll be detailing that later, 16 teams will move on. Shots fired back and forth, taking out the right wing, Big Nell. Burden now on Phoenix, four players, four balls. Advantage right now on to Raven, five players. Good throws, just off target. Ooh, that trailer, that was a hard hit ball. That was ball. a very nice shot there. Yeah, you know, and you got to make that throw, but uh, oof, that's a tough one to start the day. Both wingers ready to defend on Phoenix. Throw there. Over at. And okay, good protection. I love how the wingers are moving up. Oh, and exposed and caught at the line. The game's been very back and forth on who's got the player advantage. Who will get this first set play call coming out of the middle? Big pump fakes. Olivier in the middle. Now her opposing center getting the ball, heading to the line. I believe that's Jennifer Tan. She doesn't have a number listed on the roster, but can you confirm that on Raven? She's the target right now? Yep. It's out, it's out the other side. Look at us filling out the roster. And we seem to be court. missing a ball. Oh, we found it. <laughs> that's that's going to be one of the challenges of this tournament with so many courts everywhere. Oh, I, I fight at the line, but no one's taking a shot. Hey, Mitch. It's very timid. very timid. Watch for two balls in hand. No, they, it's the center again. Captain Pinion in the middle. Make the play call. She's calling her own number. Oh, tricked me with that one. Oh, and see, I, one of the things that you kind of you might be noticing there was it was kind of a traditional formation back and forth. And if it's like, okay, your turn to throw, okay, give you the, the space for a play call, having that moment there by Pollard to be like, no, I'm going to break up the formation and shoot at you when you're not really ready. You look for those moments to kind of disrupt the play. 
Great two ball block. Phoenix now with the player advantage and balls. Yeah, sharing with teammate, making that play call. At the line. One thing Raven, they're they're quite defensive and, and unlikely to have a counter throw. And they've ended up in this 1v3 situation for the first set. Five minutes into that first set of the tournament. Let's check on the survivability here of the captain. Now Phoenix is very well aware that this is a dangerous situation. Kelly Sutherland, an excellent catcher. Good single ball block, sends it mid-court. Almost knocking out the ball retriever. That was a good throw. Kelly, historically, a primarily a cloth player. Lots of foam experience as well. I, I can imagine that's a theme for a lot of Raven here. We've got uh, Deidre Afkeni. She's on Team Canada Women's Cloth. And Tessa Ryan, Team Canada Mixed Cloth. And that's the first point. You also uh, have Elena Booth, another cloth player, playing the mixed team. And here they are, making their way to foam. First point has gone to Phoenix. Now we're saying this on stream here, David, but do you see, it's, I guess the, the closest thing to the, the countdown clock here is the 23.52 in the, the far corner? Yeah, that's uh, our estimated time, I would say. Exactly. Of course, the court time is what will be the determinant, but it's a pretty good guess for how much time is left. We're looking at about six and a half minutes into play. That's right is a limb. Great pressure here by the near court Phoenix team. Just the, the way the, the team came and supported the ball retrieving was so good. Raven finding themselves up players and now with four balls. Half Kenny running around in the middle, making sure everyone's got the play call. Big throw. Montier taking out. Great teamwork there. Making that play, calling it out, executing, getting hit. One, two, elimination. Now, I uh, the formation here, I see at this back line, I call it waiting for the bus. So when you see a lot of players just kind of standing there, I think one, one thing we'd want is them to be less in sync. When you watch dodgeball, like the more, ap the appearance of chaos can be a good thing. You'll find often that some of the teams with more experience as they start playing together more that you'll get some players who are more comfortable being aggressive corners, engaging a little more, stepping up a little higher to threaten the other team and try and make them comfortable. And they've got the player advantage right now. Two shots missing on the wing. It's just, and it's one of the things too as an advanced player to move around without the ball, to, to do the dance and draw attention. It's two shots fired, one connecting. Sutherland protecting teammates on the left wing. Slow to retreat. He throws, and the first ball was good for a block, and not that second one. And now the 1v4 set up in favor of Raven. One of the truly interesting things about dodgeball is the fact that we have so many balls as part of the play, right? Most sports are just a single object. Bouchard eliminated on that third throw. Yeah, it's like it's you know that the the sim like the the kind of the flow of multiple balls and how you manage that as that, as we just saw with the third one. It can make it very difficult to track what's happening without more experience, but it certainly makes the game very interesting and frenetic. And we are tied one one. Two Ontario teams used to squaring up with one another. Now on the other side of the country, we're halfway through. Oh, the catch! Bringing it in, and all claps. Monica Modestino with that catch. Griffin sporting the hat. See, when you do it backwards hat, you're not, not so vulnerable. Uh, we actually may have to have a double check on the rules. I, I, I'm not sure what the tournament here, but generally WDF format, there's some very specific uniform regulations, and one of those things is hats. But. Mm. First game of the tournament, very possible that we're just, you know, working things out and getting them ready. Great single ball block. Big now. Eight, five, four, three. 
ready for the catch on the Ravens end, but not quite close enough. And despite Ravens starting the set up six to five with that extra ball advantage, we're finding ourselves with now player advantage on Phoenix's side. And yeah, getting out of the way of the ball. Now Retriever brings it in to Captain Pinion with the play call. Now three headed to the line. Right on target, good active ball blocking. A lot of the calls for Phoenix will be coming from the middle, whoever finds themselves in that position. Out fakes on protection, returning. Lots of balls, lots of players. Let's see what they do as the captain hangs back. We may be nearing the last minute of play of this half of the set. Ryan is eliminated. Or, sorry, this half of the game, apologies. Oh, another hit. Phoenix finding themselves well up on players. What the ball burden here on Raven. So the plural of Raven is Raven? I mean, I suppose in the <laughs> context of the teams here, yes. Yeah. Oh, two right on target taken out Southern. Now one on two. Burden is on Phoenix. Ball is off court and the players, you'll note, are not allowed to touch it. And one of the players is definitely getting the attention <laughs> of the retriever. And, and the Phoenix took it. Final one does it right at the knee. I believe we may be into no blocking. And it looks correct, so when you see the no blocking. It's either no blocking or a one minute set, depending on time. That is one of the rule uh, changes for this tournament. If a game ends, or sorry, a set ends, and there is under a minute, but more than 30 seconds, we're resetting the clock to one minute for that point before set up begins. Both teams ready at the back line. No opening rush. So we are indeed into no blocking. And the burden will be on Phoenix with the most recent point. Look to them to be more aggressive. Sudden death is a very interesting part of the game because a lot of teams will feel a little bit more pressure and as a result will find themselves being a little more loose. And oftentimes the simple fact that you can't block is too too daunting of a task for players, and they, they just find that they don't want to have that ball to not make themselves a potential target. So a question for you then would be, as a team goes from that intermediate to advanced, is this something they practice scenario-wise, or just get that experience? I can speak from personal experience that it's something you perpetually need to work on, because we Oh, hey, here's a great catch with Goran turning it around, bringing it right back to you. Steph Goran bringing them back to five players on the Phoenix side. It's it takes a lot of practice to reprogram yourself to be used to how to play that no blocking, to value that shot, value the option, and, and readjust. But it's also an interesting way to have more power when you find yourself up on balls. When it, and it, no, another thing I'd wonder is, like, Phoenix plays with a little bit more movement and chaos, whereas was Raven is tighter formation and great shots, as we see there, right? I'm going to cross. Very back and forth in this set. And, and the, the sort of chaos favors or the, the players with a little bit more chaos are, are favored in, I, I find, the no blocking where there's that comfort of, of I can't kind of defend behind the ball and that sort of thing. Indeed. I, I find a useful term for it is controlled chaos. You want to still create the element of concern and danger for the other team while maintaining the right level of ball control. Well, they're just getting out of the way of that ball. Burden, Phoenix, she's making the play call, as you said, in the middle. Phoenix finding themselves up one player, two Ravens, three. Quick movement on behalf of Halfkenny. Now she's looking to her teammates for the play call. Defensive push. Kansika. 3v3. We've got right and Fonseca in corners for Raven, or sorry, for Phoenix. And the tag makes it advantage Raven. Up players and up balls. Four, three. Missing. Oh, that man. was a great preempt counter there from Bouchard. And here we see just like how even these teams are. Three to three, now to two to two. Shots wide of their target. I believe these two teams were number four and number five out of Ontario. Ruth on the far end with two balls, making that play call. Sharing with Half Kenny. Two players very familiar with one another again from their experience together playing cloth. They've been playing together as Raven 
for some time now. Half yeah. looking for that catch attempt. Yeah, here, a good thump, too. Good teamwork from Phoenix aside to get that hit. 1v2, electing to take that corner. Much like Kelly. Helena's dangerous for that catch. Booth Very patient. Rip. She's got a windmill, too. Oh, yes. Find ourselves one on one. Helena Booth, Mimi Bouchard. In our first no blocking of the tournament. It's dangerous when you got those two in hand. You're ready to defend. Hopping out of the way. What a wonderful. I love the one two combo of under over. Not many players capable of that. Often more on the women's side of things. I think a lot of it comes from playing softball. Absolutely. Oh, and there we talk. Coming from Tan. Defensive pressure. That ball had to roll all the way across. Ball retriever making apologies. Phoenix's right side corner is Harry Bignall. She's actually hails from the UK and is playing with the team uh, in addition after their play at Provincials. Very familiar with cloth, lots of experience. Learning foam and doing an excellent job of it. And here's a limbed now. Getting closer to an even lineup here, 4v3. Ball apiece. And the women on Phoenix, and they send 1-2. None connecting. Burden back to them with that counter throw from the Raven side. 
Ooh. You can see that moment where Tan's making the play call and then went, wait, we don't have the burden. Team makes a quick adjustment and then moves back and allows Phoenix to take that shot. And here again, that controlled chaos. Montesino playing very aggressive from corner. And Rook on the far end. Not the thrower. Good single ball block. We're seeing Raven switch to a little more of a quick counter reaction to Phoenix's advantage, and they've made hits on both of those shots. Ooh, two on target, attempted catch. And a third one again with that counter from Raven's side. Working really well for them to make that difference to get them back up on players. Coach Guy Armstrong hoping to have a comeback for his team right there. Good two ball block. And that's the situation you absolutely want. Trades are one of the least utilized high leverage tools with seven minutes and 28 seconds left. I just, I just love that move there, not retreating. Trades are incredibly useful in play, but it, it's, it's a fine balance, right? You, you ideally want to find yourself in an advantage position, either mm -hmm. up players. Oh, absolutely. Or at the very least, in, in a better positional situation so that if it doesn't pan out, you don't find yourself down. Rush, toss back, no one pitching. Raven with the advantage from the last set. They don't appear to take quite as aggressive of a rush as some teams. Whereas Phoenix is uh, very prone to taking that first shot on a rush, whether or not it is on them. And shot on target. Takes out half Kenny. Great now teamwork on the Phoenix side. Yeah, we have a player advantage. While well, we don't have the ball advantage. Phoenix play calling out of the middle. Lancier. We've been in this position many times, one team up, and very quickly things have changed in these sets. Watch it for coming out of the left side, and it does. Good defense, protecting yourself there on the far end. Trust it with the, the cover game. afterwards. Shot clock counting down, just two seconds remaining. They target Ryan and miss. Feel those emotions as you arrive at Nationals, just that shot clock and trying to make those first team calls of the day. And then hearing five, four. A very common situation in dodgeball is teams will have priority players playing on their wing or their corner. And you'll notice that the middle will cover and protect to an extent and then defer that ball back off to the corner. Some teams will swap in and out of position dependent on how things are going, but usually waiting for that defensive moment to change. We're quiet in the action right now. Shot clock still counting down against Phoenix right now. And we get it out again just in time. Phoenix still maintaining that player advantage. Time getting nice and low. Ooh, oh. <laughs> and the trailer. So dangerous, those passes coming in from Shagger, or from Retrievers, you have to worry to keep your eyes up because that, that throw can come at any point in time and it's a great moment to take that shot. Looking up just to see if teammates got it and they do not. And that's an elimination for Fonseca. A little, little bit rushed as it kind of, you get that feeling for Phoenix that their, their pattern is, is a little bit disturbed as they're trying to have that, uh, get it within the 10 second clock. Of course, things can be delayed in getting your play going as you're waiting for those balls to be retrieved to you. As, as you get a little more comfortable and familiar with it, you can start making those calls before the ball even comes into play. Have that anticipation, that preparedness for it. Another attempt, misses. Four players on, on the Phoenix end to the five. There's a five on Phoenix, four on Ravens. Another miss. Ravens seeming to opt for a little less of a counter-heavy approach to their defense. We'll see if they'll shift back to it. It may have to do with the fact that their wings are different from the last set. And it works on that team. There's Gallimau is taken out. Right taking the left wing and one, two, punch. Great accuracy from both of the Phoenix throwers there. Taking out Lomax. Has things to say. Player advantage, Phoenix still with a four to three. And Great shots. So many balls thrown by Phoenix there, looking to ensure at least one hit in that volley. Mm -hmm. Worked out in their favor. Sutherland's with some words. So 
David, one of the uh, the things we, we often think is like broadcasters, we might be losing our voices, mm -hmm. but you have the experience is, is as a referee, you're much more likely to lose your voice as we can hear it from this far away. Great work by the referee on court. Sean, Sean is really projecting well so that we can hear it clearly, all the players can hear it clearly, makes it really nice and easy to know where you're standing in that moment. And that, that is so important in a tournament like this when you know, there's six other courts, you want to know when your five seconds is counting down. I think the, the real trick there when you find yourself in that position as the referee is to try and make sure you, you yell from your chest, not just from your throat, so that you might be able to last. We've got many people who have come here specifically to referee, and the sport can't run without it, so we would very much appreciate their contributions. Lots of balls now on the Phoenix end. They've got two in hand each. Ready, set, and pump faking. Solo throw over at Fern, missing. Ryan, yet another player on the Raven side that is that catch threat. Many, many sets where she's turned it, making that final catch, getting her team that win. Fang did a great job getting low and strafing out of the way. One thing you might see from, say, a Ryan is that defensive throw just to have kind of body ready free for the, the catch. Free those hands up so that you're prepared for it, particularly sometimes to disrupt the other side. Maybe you can make them only take a single throw instead of two. Just raise the chance of making that catch. I like to see the attempted catch. Just dropped the ball. Great teamwork there on those throws from Phoenix and then the preparedness on the defense to survive through on the counter. And the aggressiveness to stay up and get their own rebound. Two on one. Balls are now inert when they hit each other, crossing. Two opposing balls making contact makes both of those balls dead. Positive plus a positive. Now will Phoenix take this opportunity to try and run down Raven? No, they remain on the back line taking their time. They are up in score right now. Truthfully, they can dictate the pace. There's no rush. And mid-court throw wide of its target. Gets another ball, now the player burden shifts over to Phoenix. Shot clock counting down, three seconds remaining. Preemptive throw from Fang resets it. Is the score clock. If the score 3 2, if Phoenix can take this set, this may be their game. Sliding again, staying alive. Oh, that ball crossing resets. Sean McAllister, correct? Indeed. He has determined it is on the other team. Phoenix now with four balls, two apiece. Let's see what the co-captain determines with Montier. Fang again. Taking but that preemptive throw to try and deter her opposition, maybe make an opening for herself, easier to survive through. We have an OM. Another one with that preempt, getting that hit on the Phoenix side. One on one now. Oh, only 15 seconds remaining in the second half. Wow. We're hitting the end of this set. Yeah. Ready, sets, and is it a strike? It's a miss. Fang is such an incredible survivor at the line. Shot, and it's good. That ties it up. And we're going into a tiebreaker. Sudden death. Wow. If time is correct. And kind of perfect because how even both of these teams have been. Oh, that is a MVP moment for you Fang. Couldn't, couldn't ask for much more in your first game of the playoffs on court one here with a commentary combination of myself, David Armstrong, Ben Johnson. Ben with a lot of experience in this role. So now, of course, as our first sudden death, or sorry, our first no blocking of the second half happens here, the primary difference between normal play is simply that you cannot block. If the ball makes contact with a ball in your hand, it's as if it hit your body. It's a continuation of your body, I would say. First throw goes low, resets the shot clock. Trailer does it. Taking out Ryan, attempt to catch, unsuccessful. Half Kenny trying to see if she could get, read that ball to make that team catch to save her teammate. That went to the ground first. Looking to the ref to confirm. Oh, actually, oh, it, it a little rainbowed over the player. Equal players on both sides, but Raven is up balls. Oh, no, hey, oh two of limbs. And, and then somewhat quiet eliminations. It's Indeed. Not during the action, as, as Griffin and Olivier are eliminated. Now four players, four balls, preemptive throw. Not striking. Again, that slight change to the rules of 
not being allowed to block can drastically change your approach both offensively and defensively. We find ourselves seeing a lot more of that controlled chaos. Sutherland with that catch. That's the danger. She's looking for those. Raven find themselves up a player. Four balls in hand. Back and forth throws. Love the elbows in on the far wing. As a, you know you're a smart player when you're able to kind of have that body control. You have to throw again, Sutherland missing. You know, honestly, you wouldn't know it's a no blocking. So it's, it's a sort of protective no blocking. Where like I think one of the easiest ways to determine it if you're just watching a random clip is watching that player drop the ball to their sides when that mm -hmm. throw comes in. Removing the temptation. It's, it's an interesting strategy. Not entirely my favorite thing, if only because it limits your, off, your options offensively to react after a throw. But it certainly is a thing you will see a lot, particularly from players that are efficient catchers. Ballard now with two balls in hand. Both, every, all of the balls, actually. And they take out Captain Sutherland. All three throwing together, making that hit. We're now seeing ourselves with a player advantage on the Phoenix side and the catch from half -game. Big move! Swaying that set. Huge turnaround now. Three Raven. on two. Still anyone's game. Quick movement. Preemptive throw. All three balls. Oh, okay, confirmed hit. Now 1v3. Dunbrook remaining. Swearing the, the properly fitted hat here. Advantage on the Raven side with three balls. Who it is? And oh. the hit. Congratulations, Raven, for bringing it back. Catches win matches. Take that game 4-3. Great game between both of them. And we'll be moving along ever so quickly. Thank you, David. And the 9 a.m. slot, and we'll be watching Sirens versus Rogue. Best of luck with the rest of your day, then.